Does Harry understand that actions have consequences? That's what I found myself asking this week after there were kind of several stories that came out where Harry was just kind of complaining and it's like he all of a sudden, it all of a sudden dawned on him. Yeah, Mexit has consequences, dude. I, I don't think he knew that before. Hello everyone, welcome to Royal News Network. My name is Brittany, and today we're gonna to be talking about kind of several things that have come out about Prince Harry recently. A lot of kind of complaining and hemming and hawing through his friends, and just how it's kind of portraying him in this rather negative light in light of his grandmother's funeral. And that basically, no matter what the royal family does, they can never ever placate him and his wife. A couple of the stories we got is, you know, Harry's military uniform. We also have when he was notified about his grandmother's death. And also they're very much complaining that they were not at a diplomatic reception that is happening on Sunday evening before the funeral because, you know, exactly what you need when you have all these international figures there is two people hawking for Netflix. That's just exactly what you want on the menu. But if you guys haven't been here to Royal News Network before, hello, my name is Brittany. And on this channel, we talk about everything related to royals. So that's news, gossip, fashion, jewelry, television shows, movies, and history. We shall do it all right here. So if you guys want to subscribe, that would be fantastic. And like I said, today we are going to be talking about Harry and his litany of complaints since he's arrived in the UK since his grandmother's death. Because, you know, when somebody dies, it's all about you, you know, and your feelings and your emotions and your reactions. There's not a broader picture there. It's just kind of you. Now granted everybody mourns differently and obviously people have, you know, it's it's a complicated process and obviously when funeral happens there's a lot of emotions, there's a lot of family tensions that rise up. But just looking at all these articles about Harry coming out, I just kept thinking and I'm like, does he not understand that when he and Megan announced Mexit that you know, you would not get your way A and there would actually be some consequences to this. Some of them meaning that you might not get all the military privileges you had before. You might not get invited to high-ranking royal events with high-ranking members of the international community because, hey, guess what? You are a private citizen now. Isn't that awesome? You are just like the rest of us, Harry and Meghan. And guess what? That was your choice. You know, if you hadn't instituted Mexit, you would actually be at that re re reception. I have absolutely no doubt you would be at that reception tonight. But instead, you just want to try to make your way in Hollywood like any other hustler in Hollywood. And guess what? They also don't get invited to international diplomatic receptions at Buckingham Palace generally. Just putting that out there. But this seems to completely escape Harry. And so I'm just gonna kinda go over and unpack some of these details that we have and kinda try to show some different sides and perhaps explain some of the things that might be going on behind the scenes. Cause I feel like we've had a lot of chatter from friends of Harry's recently about how things, uh, it's just bonkers that they're not mingling there with, you know, the president of France. Why aren't they mingling with the president of France? <laughs> you know, again, just realities of his situation and the path he's chosen in life seem to completely escape him at times. And I mean, I think a lot of it is down to obviously his wife, Meghan Markle. I think she whispers in his ear a lot. And I think again, they have these grand, they have delusions of grandeur in their own mind. And they think they are these, very much these international movers and shakers. But I think a lot of that still remains in their own heads. It's not real. So this is quite interesting. And I just wanted to point out here before we begin, that Omid Scobie, who is a spokesperson basically unofficial for Harry and Meghan, he's constantly made fun of in the British press. If you, you haven't heard of him, you should look him up. And because he, he's the one who actually said that Harry and Meghan were invited to this diplomatic reception and that they were uninvited when they were actually, I would doubt, highly ever invited to this thing. And the palace is just like, I don't know how they got the invitation, A, and I don't know why they think they're coming, B. And I just thought it was really interesting that Omid Scobie has said, you know, it's always the palace that leaks all these stories. It's always the palace that's coming out against Harry and Meghan. But ironically, we have a friend of Harry's talking constantly this week as if, you know, I, I wasn't sure he had friends anymore. So I think that is a good thing for him because I wasn't sure if he had any friends anymore that weren't, you know, explicitly, you know, you know, determined by Meghan Markle to be the appropriate friend. So I'm glad he does have friends, but he just sounds, I think, delusional. And I mean, I can understand some of the hurt behind some things, but I can also understand that, hey, you're not as important as you were anymore. And you know what? Sometimes things are not communicated with you because you have decided to be lower on, on the ladder than you used to be. And you know what? 
that's kind of life. So kind of the first thing that we kind of heard about is that Prince Harry was real upset that he wanted to wear his military uniform and was told no. And he kind of came out with this statement basically saying that, yes, he, he's fine with it. He's a, he really is. And so this is what it said. Prince Harry will wear a morning suit throughout the events honoring his grandmother. His decade of military service is not determined by the uniform he wears. And we respectfully ask that focus remain on the life and legacy of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Well, that's a nice sentiment, but I don't totally feel it from Harry because there's all these articles now coming out about how upset he is about basically everything and that he's not really getting his way. And the palace did seem to kind of cave to him a bit, although it's not for the reason that Omid Scobie claims. Omid Scobie put in a tweet that the reversal, so because of this grandchildren's vigil that was going to happen, it was determined that it was okay for Harry to wear his uniform because it had been stipulated before, I believe, by Her Majesty the Queen that Prince Andrew could wear his when they were doing this vigil. And so Harry was allowed to do the same, which I've already said I thought was kind of fair play. But then Omid Scobie goes in and he, you know, kind of, he kind of says that, well, you know, the palace caved to public pressure. He goes, the reversal first reported by the mirror follows Harry's statement saying his military service is not determined by the uniform he wears, but it is understood the palace caved to public sentiment after thousands complained about the decision to ban him and not An Prince Andrew. And again, I just feel like that's Omid Scobie gaslighting, which he has done a couple of times this week. This kind of bait and switch, the saying things that are, you know, that the palace caved to public pressure. And I was like, I don't think people care that much that Harry's not wearing his uniform. Uniform. I really don't think they do. I think probably a lot of complaints were about Andrew wearing his uniform, but I just don't feel like a ton of people were super, super into Harry wearing his uniform. And the palace did kind of show Harry a thing or two here by stripping him of some of the acronyms on his uniform, basically because he no longer has those roles. And he was very, very upset about this, devastated, in fact, that yes, when you abandon your country, you get to keep all the rights and privileges you did before, and how dare somebody take that from you? I mean, come on, guys. We can't take all these things from him. This is according to the Telegraph. The previous day, the Duke had been taken aback when he received his uniform from Buckingham Palace. Opening up the carefully packaged clothing at Frogmore House, his home on the Windsor Estate, he discovered that it was missing the ER initials, so that's Elizabeth Regina from Hid the Shoulder Appellates, the Anglinets, ornamental braided rope that go hand in hand with the cipher had also been removed. Such decorations can only be worn by personal aide de camps to the sovereign. The Duke was appointed to the honorary war role in October 2018, but was stripped of it in February 2021 when it was confirmed he would not be returning to royal duties, meaning he was not entitled to wear them. Regardless, it triggered a furious exchange of phone calls and messages that was still not resolved on Friday evening. Such was his frustration that he is said to have considered wearing a morning suit to the vigil to avoid humiliation. The Duke was told it would be sorted out on his arrival to Westminster Hall, but when he eventually emerged in public, he was wearing the uniform sent by the palace. And so it looks like, too, to appease him, his brother removed a bit of his uniform, the Anglinets, as well. I find that kind of hysterical <laughs> in a way because it obviously them telling him what we'll, we'll sort it out when they got to Westminster is to get him dressed and get him there and before telling him no, they weren't going to do that, <laughs> which I think is kind of funny and goes to show you how they have to deal with him. And that is kind of how it played out. It goes to show you that this is kind of what you do, I think, to children. You tell them, yeah, well, we're going to take care of that when we get there. And then you, they never take care of it because they were never planning on doing it in the first place. And so they're like, well, if we get you there, you're already dressed. You can't go in there naked. So <laughs> there we go. You're, you're kind of stuck doing it or you're stuck looking like a fool and not going. So I think it's kind of funny that the palace played him that way in a lot of ways. But again, it just shows you, okay, you left, you resigned from the royal family very publicly, very dramatically, right before Catherine's birthday. And then you have the gall to complain that the position that you had that left the ER on your shoulder, representing that you were, you know, personal aide de camp and those sorts of things to Queen Elizabeth, that those were taken off. Now you're complaining about it when you deserted her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, there's just no other way to put what Harry did to his to the royal family, which was basically desert them. He was just like, eh, 
this is not for me and this isn't for my wife because it's too hard. So we're gonna leave. And you know, that he gets this uniform back and then is shocked that they've removed these. And again, shows too that they wanted the uniform back because they wanted to make sure he's not abusing whatever he gets from them. So there's a lot of managing of Harry because they knew if they sent that uniform to him with those things on and they told him to take it off, he wouldn't take it off. And so they just kind of went ahead and did, yeah, no, we're not playing this game. So they're off and then when he complains, they're like, you know, we're sorry. Well, we'll take care of it when we get there. And when they get there, they're like, yeah, no. I mean, William's going to take this thing off, you know, to kind of give you, you know, to be half, to meet you kind of halfway here. But yeah, we're not, you can stomp your feet, you know, shout to the stars all you want. We don't care. And again, I think it shows you, they have to treat him as if he's a child because you cannot, I said this in another video, you can't negotiate with terrorists. You can't negotiate with Meghan and Harry anymore because basically all they want is their way or nothing else. And that's not how, A, the real world works. It just doesn't work that way. And B, Harry is very much being dishonorable to his grandmother by complaining about these kind of things that he doesn't need to complain about. He should just be honored they're letting him wear his military uniform at all. But it's the stunning entitlement that he has, the stunning arrogance, that despite the fact that he left all these, all these traditions and his heritage and his culture and everything behind, he's still demanding everything. And that goes to show you again, the kind of people Harry and Meghan are, and that it's just still not dawning on him that yes, this has consequences. One of those things is that, hey, you don't get invited to diplomatic receptions. Apparently this is a bonkers. This is a bonkers idea that you would not invite a guy who, you know, kind of does this thing called better up. You know, it's kind of this pseudo coaching counseling thing. I mean, they do coaching, but they almost kind of advertise it almost as counseling and it's just coaching. And, you know, we don't need that kind of guy there at something like this. A diplomatic reception is a hugely, hugely important event. And you have people from all over the world. This is massive. This is one of the biggest diplomatic receptions they've had in, I think, years, if not decades. You know, perhaps the last biggest one was Catherine's, Catherine and William's wedding because it wasn't one with Harry and Meghan because they're not the future heirs. So it'd be Catherine and William, which was over 10 years ago. And they didn't have, you know, all the royals and all international leaders there. This is something very, very special and unique. And they don't need two private citizens who are only in it for their own gain there, walking around milling with people. This is not hard. It's really not hard. It's not difficult to understand. And here's what the kind of quote says we have about it. And this is from the Times. It is beyond bonkers if they're not there. Everyone is coming in from around the world to pay their respects to the queen. A source close to the Sussex says that kind of decision and the palace's original edict that Harry could not wear his military uniform at the vigil, which was subsequently overturned, makes him feel as if the majority of the operation is against you. It's hard. Nobody likes to feel like they're being excluded. You're not being excluded, Harry. You're being managed. There's a difference. You have proven yourself untrustworthy. Ergo, they have to manage you in a way they probably don't have to William, Catherine, Edward, and even Andrew, for Pete's sakes. This idea Harry has that somehow he is exempt from the consequences of his decision is just a bit ludicrous. He left. And I've said that multiple times throughout this video. He left. Scorched earth policy, him and Megan. Here's the thing about him and Megan too. They gave the royal family a list of their demands on their website. And they told the royal family, we're still going to do tours. We're still going to represent the queen. We're still going to do yada, yada, yada. But you know, we're not going to really include you in any of it. We're just kind of, to a certain extent, going to do it on our own and allow you to pay for it. That was their demands. They, I mean, to say that you're gonna go on tours, I mean, basically they wanted taxpayer funded vacations around the world. That's what they wanted. And they also said in that, in that initial draft too, which I had to get back on the way back machine and you can still find it there, that they were still internationally protected persons. Ergo, they still needed basically taxpayer funded security forever, even though you know they wanted to be on their own. What's completely clear to me is that Meghan and Harry are starting to become very desperate. In this moment after the Queen's death, they could have been elevated. They might even gotten a second title. I'm not saying they would have, I have no idea, but it's like they would have maybe gotten a second title. They would have gotten maybe more privileges, more of these things. Do you know who goes to all the royal events all over Europe? Goes to the weddings, the birthday events that you know are usually tiara events. 
Prince Edward and Sophie, the Countess of Wessex, who may have taken over that role while Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. It might not have been Catherine and William. It might have been Harry and Meghan. And you would get to go to kind of all the fun events, you know, events, you know, these great birthday party celebrations and huge weddings and, you know, tiaras galore. You maybe could have done that. And you may have had access to a ton of new jewelry. Charles could have given you some things, but no, you were desperate. You wanted Hollywood. You didn't care about royalty. You cared about Hollywood and celebrity. And you know what? Hollywood celebrities don't go to events like this. They generally don't unless they're the entertainment. That's, that's the way they go. And Harry and Meghan would have been the side show, except for when they went to events like these, you know, they went to the Lion King premiere and what happened? Harry was pitching Megan to Bob Iger. And they, the royal family can't have that right now. This is a very sensitive time. And I think maybe, perhaps, of course, because Harry's dim, and I think to a lot of extent Megan's dim about all this as well. She thinks she's she's up on it. You know, her, her game level, I think, is influencer and hustler. Those are her two kind of niches. This, this broader royal thing is a complete mystery to her. She doesn't get it. She really doesn't. And so they can't have Harry and Meghan be there. This idea Harry and Meghan have that they could be still who they were as royals is just not the case anymore. They can't use the HRH. They can't be at diplomatic functions. They just can't. And they are being treated as if they were Hollywood celebrities because that's what they wanted for themselves. They don't want to be royal. They wanted to be Hollywood celebrities. And guess what? This is the consequence of your actions. I guess this video is turning into more of a rant than I thought it would, so I do apologize. But it's just like the simplicity of this is just striking how ignorant and arrogant Harry and Meghan are at the same time. And then we go on to kind of the last thing, which is that Harry apparently was only informed about his grandmother's death about five minutes before it was, you know, exposed to the international world and that the prime minister was told before he was. Now, granted, I could, I can understand why you would be somewhat upset about that because apparently his grandmother had passed away two hours even before basically he landed at Balmoral. So I can understand, you know, the waiting, but the queen is a unique individual. This is not like our average everyday, you know, this is not like my grandparents or grandparent dying or something like that. This is very, very different. There are constitutional things that must be abided by. There are grave impacts to her death that changed the lives of William, of Catherine, of the Waleses, of Charles, of Camilla, all the members of the family. It has a huge impact of those at the highest level. And so because of that, they, I think too, you got to think, you know, Harry is her grandson, but Charles and Anne are her children. Edward and Andrew are her children. And, you know, sometimes these children, they just want a chance to just be there with their mother and mourn to themselves. And they kind of let the rest of the family know later as well, because they will be eventually told. It's not like they won't, but that she had already passed so quickly, I think, was a grave shock to the family in a lot of ways. But also it's like sometimes it's like perhaps they just wanted a moment as siblings to mourn her together. Now granted, really Andrew and Edward didn't get there in time, but perhaps there was just a period of grief between Charles and Anne, but they did have to let the prime minister know because again, it's not everybody's, this is not your average grandmother dying. This is a woman who is head of state and there are certain things that must be abided by before that. And so my question would be to Harry too is who else when was everybody else informed? Were you really the last on the chain or was everybody else kind of informed about the same time that you were? Or was it because you were flying and you've made it so difficult for your family to get in contact with you that it took them a while to actually kind of track you down and let you know? Because it sounds like most of the time Harry trades things with his brother and his father, you know, between text messages and those sorts of things. So perhaps it was that. And then I don't think this is the case, but I think it bears mentioning. You know, kind of Harry did the same thing with his family. When Mexit was announced, they gave them a couple minutes notice before it went live. Maybe at the most 10 to 15 minutes. And that very much blew up the family. It deeply impacted the whole family. You didn't care then. So why are you caring now? Why all of a sudden are you upset that you're not being treated as the confidential family member that you were at one point? You're being treated as an outlier. You are being isolated because that is how they have to treat you now. They can't be, they can't tell you their deepest, darkest secrets because they don't know if you're gonna go on Oprah again and expose them to the world. 
So the royal family has to treat you with kid gloves and they have to keep you at a distance. That's the situation you've set up, Harry. That is the parameters that you have put around yourself is that you are somebody who cannot be trusted. You cannot be trusted to do the things that normal, a normal family member would do. At the micro level, let's say, it's like, you know, as if you went to a funeral and you had this big meltdown moment and your, you know, cousin posted it on social media. That's what the royal family is dealing with. And they're already deeply exposed to the public. As I was filming this video, it was announced that Charlotte and George will be walking behind their grandmother's coffin. They are nine and seven years old. Great grandmothers, I should say. That's a huge burden. They're even younger than you were, Harry, when you walked behind your mother's coffin. That is, and have you spent any time seeing how your, your niece and nephews are doing? After your great grandmother's death, I mean, they were very close with her. They actually spent time with her. You and your children did not. So who really, and that's was your decision. That's what you did is you, you decide you were gonna stay home. You decide that you were gonna leave. And you decide you didn't wanna spend much time in your family anymore. Now I can't stay to the reasons why, but the rest of the royal family appears exceedingly close. This is what we've seen since the Queen's Platinum Jubilee and we saw all the kids hanging all over each other during the pageant. They were interacting with Catherine, with William and Mike Tyndall and Zara and you know they were all having clearly a lot of fun together. They clearly spend a lot of time together outside the public eye. And what did you decide to do? Not bring your kids to that event and not even stay for it. You were fleeing the country before you even got to enjoy it. And you just look at these the Windsors and this mourning process they're going through and they seem like a deeply close family. You've made yourself the outlier here. You have made yourself the black sheep. You would still be embraced by your family, but you chose a wife who hated your family and who was is going to try to do everything she can to destroy it. And why are you surprised that all of a sudden they don't want to hang out with you anymore? They don't keep you in your their confidence anymore. They don't do that because you can't be trusted. And when you can't be trusted, you are not involved in big diplomatic events. You are not involved in pretty big council meetings. Not that you would probably be anyways, but still, you have made the decision that you don't wanna be a part of history. You wanna to try to hack it in Hollywood. And the ones who will suffer the most throughout all of this are his own children. Archie and Lilibet have hardly spent any time with Queen Elizabeth. Lilibet maybe spent a grand total of 15 to 30 minutes. That's how much time she spent with her great grandmother. Even though she was alive, for 15 months of Her Majesty's life. Archie was alive for a little over three years of Her Majesty's life, and he probably only saw her a handful of times at the most. And imagine being Archie and Lilibet. You grow up. You find out all of a sudden that, yes, your great-grandmother was Queen Elizabeth II, the greatest monarch in the whole world. In fact, Lilibet, Lily, you were named after her. How fantastic is that? And then you think of yourself as a baby. Well, I know I wasn't, a, you know, I don't have any memories from when I was one year old, but I was, I was at these events, right? Well, well, no, you, you could have been at the pageant, but, you know, we left early. You didn't go. And then Archie's like, well, I, I could have gone to a couple of the other events. I could have gone to the Trooping the, Col Trooping the Color. Well, well, no, you were at home. And then it was come to the pageant. Yeah, yeah, you were at home too. What about the concert? No, no, you were at home. You, you weren't allowed to go. They've missed out on the most, some of the most critical events of their young life to a certain extent. They've missed out on it. They've missed out on their great grandmother. And I think we can all recognize that, you know, missing out on time with a family member is a regret many people have, but it goes beyond that to you were, you could have been at the precipice of very, very historic moments and your parents didn't want you to be there. Your parents decide they didn't want to be there. And ergo, they denied you the opportunity to have, even if they don't remember it, I'm sure Archie perhaps would have remembered some of the pageant if he was allowed to attend or the concert. He might have not been young enough to fully appreciate it, but I bet you he would have remembered at least part of it. He would have remembered perhaps spending some time with his great grandmother. Since Archie and Lilibet are so removed from the royal family, they probably won't remember any of it. I moved as a young child, um, 
a couple of times. And I think my memories of certain periods of my life aren't as good because I moved. And once you move and you're outside the rhythm of, you know, having all these recollections come back to you time and time again, I feel like you kind of lose out on aspects of your memory because of that. And I feel like that's what's going to happen with Archie and Lily. They're really not going to know any other royal relatives at all. And yet their parents are demanding titles. They're demanding this and that because everybody has to respect Archie and Lilibet because, you know, they are adjacent far away from the throne. <laughs> and again, they only have their parents to blame and that they, their parents seem to be complaining about everything, especially Harry. I just want to say, Harry, again, this is all on you, bud. This is all on you. You have nobody else to blame in this situation but yourself and your wife. That's it. You've made the circumstances that the royal family has to treat you with. You have made those decisions. You have made it very difficult for them to trust you, to be around you, to be around your wife. And so ergo, yeah, you're missing out. And now that you're envious of that, well, you're going to have to live it with it. So suck it up, buttercup. So guys, let me know what you think about this video. Let me know what you think about the Queen's funeral. So this, I'm filming this on Sunday night and I will be editing it, putting it up Sunday night. I'm hoping to have another video as well. Then obviously we'll have the live stream for the Queen's funeral tomorrow at 5 a.m. Eastern time. We'll do kind of a pre funeral and then we'll watch the funeral 11 to 12 and then we'll be back after that for another live stream. So um, 10 to 11 British time. So that's five <laughs> to six a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that's an early morning for me. And then we'll also have obviously afterwards. So that's uh, seven to eight in the morning. So guys, I hope you guys are able to come and join me. I look forward to it. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.